A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists, also proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. So here we continue our way through the exploits, the description in the book of Acts of the exploits of the early church, or what would become known as the church. And here in today's um, part of the reading, we hear that this is the first place that the disciples were called Christian, not even just you know, kind of random strangers or people who'd been folded in, but this is the first place the disciples were called Christian. And this is after... Um, the word spreading and going out by various messengers, different people um, coming together. You hear this description of how, how the good news of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, cannot be contained in a small sect. We hear that they started out talking only to Jews, but then some people started talking to the Hellenist and word spread, and this just is catching fire. This early expansion of the church going from a small group of disciples out to the wider community, out to new and different communities, including people who had no reason to care about what a particular rabbi walking around um, in Jerusalem or in the Galilee would have to say to them. And here we see the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the power of the risen Christ um, building what we now know as the church. And so to go back to that, this is the first place the disciples were called Christians, the first place that they took that name. And it makes me think about the way that's how it works with significant things in our life, isn't it? Sometimes we're, we're acting in a way long before we take on a name. We often say when we preside at a person's wedding, I don't want to have a couple coming to me to get married if you're not already acting like um, husband and wife or spouses of whatever gender. We don't want to try and bring something into being by naming it. Often naming something is the last thing that, that sort of codifies and crystallizes a transformation that has been going on. And so I wonder on this day what it means for you in your own life to think about when is the first time you can remember naming yourself as Christian, calling yourself Christian. Think about all the times we're asked to describe ourselves. Who are you? What do you do? Well, my name is Lisa. I'm, I, I'm a mother. I'm, I'm a spouse. I'm, you know, I'm a lover of opera, whatever. And um, how often do I name I am a Christian? Now, of course, if you see me in this, you probably have a sense of that. But for, for those of us in the Christian community who don't have the luxury of wearing one of these that sort of signals for you ahead of your meeting someone, how, how often have you actually used that name for yourself? And on one level, um, I don't, it would appear from this account from Acts, it's not necessarily important that we call ourselves Christian to be Christian and to be following in the way. I mean, this, this is the first time they were called by that name, but clearly they've been doing the work of God, doing the work of Christ, doing the work of evangelism and apostleship. Um, all those things, helping God's um, presence and God's good news to spread throughout the world in this amazing way in the first years, decades after Jesus' time here walking the earth. So think on these things today for yourself. When, when do you call yourself Christian? When's the first time you called yourself Christian? Um, is, that, is that a name you use for yourself? If not, why? If it's a name that you claim for yourself, um, how does it how does it 
relate to what you're doing with the rest of your life? Is this, is this a capstone that describes the way you've been acting and living? Or is this more of an aspirational thing? I want to be a Christian and therefore the name comes first and perhaps the change in, in life comes um, along with that naming. But take a moment to think about when you call yourself Christian, and I hope God's with you in that discernment and in that um, dwelling in the question of your name, all of your names, and particularly that name. And may God bless you in that discernment, and may God bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>